this week's market update. The International Monetary Fund cuts its growth forecast for the UK and America. The euro continues to rise against the pound and dollar and earnings season gets into full swing. The International Monetary Fund's latest update of the global economic outlook this week confirmed that the global recovery is intact, but it represented a vote of no confidence in the Anglo-Saxon economies. Growth rates for both the UK and America have been reined in, while those for Europe and China have been upgraded. The improved outlook in those two regions helped maintain the overall global growth outlook at 3.5% this year, rising to 3.6% in 2018, and that offset the slowdown on either side of the Atlantic. The UK suffered the biggest downgrade among the world's major economies after the IMF described the British economy as tepid. Growth is now expected to be just 1.7% in 2017 after a slower than expected first quarter. That's 0.3 percentage points down on the April forecast, which was made before the Q1 figures were released. Next year's 1.5% growth forecast is unchanged. The slowdown in the UK follows a better than expected response to last year's EU referendum, with activity initially defying the sceptics. It only hit the buffers at the beginning of this year when the serving of Article 50 made Brexit more of a reality and the inflationary impact of the falling pound kicked in. The IMF is clearly concerned about the impact Brexit talks will have on the UK's economy, not least because the falling pound has led to a growing gap between household earnings and inflation. That is squeezing consumption, which is the biggest contributor to Britain's GDP. The Treasury used the IMF's more cautious view of the UK outlook to press the case for a softer Brexit, with the economy rather than immigration at its core. The shift in the balance of power between the two sides in those Brexit negotiations was evident in the IMF's growth forecasts for European economies, which were raised across the board. The biggest Eurozone revisions were for the Spanish and Italian economies. Spain is now forecast to grow 3.1% this year, that's up from the previous prediction of 2.6%, while Italy's 2017 growth forecast has risen from 0.8% to 1.3%. As in the UK, the US suffered a downgrade, with growth pencilled in at 2.1% both this year and next, and that's down from 2.3% and 2.5% respectively. As in Britain, expectations have been reined back since the beginning of the year, when hopes were high that the new Trump administration would be in a position to boost the US economy via tax cuts, infrastructure spending and deregulation. Now on all three of those fronts, the White House has made less progress than the optimists expected. And more recently, an intensification of the probe into Russian interference into last year's presidential election has cast a shadow over the US administration. A weakened president is even less likely to push through radical economic measures. This week, the spotlight shifted to Donald Trump's son-in-law, Jared Kushner, who admitted in testimony to Congress that he had had contacts with Russian representatives in the run-up to January's inauguration, but he denied that any of these meetings had been in any way improper. He said he'd not colluded with any foreign government and he rejected claims that he had relied on Russian money to fund his business activities. The ongoing problems dogging the Trump administration have started to show up in the financial markets, notably expressed in the value of the dollar, which has fallen to its lowest against rival currencies and 9% down so far this year. Of course, as in Britain, a fall in currency has a silver lining. The performance of the most currency affected sectors, I'm thinking of technology, which earns a large slice of its profits overseas, has been strong this year up more than twice as much as the market as a whole. Back on this side of the Atlantic, attention is also focused on the currency markets, with euro strength being the principal flip side of dollar weakness. The European single currency is holding above the dollar 16 mark, a level it last reached in September 2015, and even that was only for a day. Before then, it had not been above this level since January 2015. As well as being a simple reflection of dollar weakness, the euro is in favour thanks to renewed expectations that the ECB is preparing to reduce or taper 
the 60 billion euros a month it's currently spending on boosting the regional economy via quantitative easing. That potential tightening of monetary policy in Europe compares with expectations that the trajectory of US rate rises might be rather flatter than previously expected. The Federal Reserve holds a two-day rate-setting meeting this week, but the consensus is that it will sit on its hands, leaving any further rate hikes until September at the earliest and probably December. In fact, expectations of even one additional rate rise this year have now fallen below 50% in the wake of some disappointing US economic data. The Fed has always maintained that its interest rate decisions will be data driven, so a more sluggish recovery than forecast and weaker underlying inflation is likely to lead to a more cautious approach from the central bank. While the rise in the euro is an expression of confidence in the European economies, it's seen less favourably by the continent's equity investors. They worry that a dearer currency will create headwinds for the region's exporters and overseas earners. It's the exact opposite of the market tailwind that's been provided by weakness in the dollar and sterling. The impact of currencies on corporate profits will come into focus this week as earnings season gets into full swing. Top of the list for investors this week will be a string of technology earnings announcements with Facebook, Amazon and Google owner Alphabet all setting out their stalls. Both Facebook and Amazon hit all-time stock price highs last week, while Google has seen its share price double over the past three years. Technology has provided investors with a safe haven during the post-crisis period of sluggish economic and corporate earnings growth. And the latest figures are likely to offer more of the same. Reliable earnings growth from capital-like businesses which have few demands on their strong cash flows other than dividends and share buybacks. Facebook is expected to unveil a slight slowdown in last year's advertising growth, but a big jump in revenues as higher volumes offset a decline in average pricing. Amazon, meanwhile, is forecast to deliver a more than 20% increase in revenues as it continues to dominate online retail. Later in the week, the banks come into focus with attention on how European banks are dealing with a slide in fixed income activity, which has already hit the big US banks. Deutsche is predicted to have seen a 30% slide in fixed income currency and commodity income and on this side of the channel, Barclays and Lloyds will be on investors' radars providing an insight into how the uncertain UK outlook is affecting the banking sector. Which leads, inevitably, to my Brexit watch. Now here, attention is focused on the apparent backpedalling by ministers on the prospect of an extended transition period following the end of the official two-year negotiating period, which was started by Article 50 in March. Chancellor Philip Hammond has long argued that Britain needs a decent period after March 2019 in which to manage the country's withdrawal from the EU and to help businesses in particular adapt to new trading, customs and regulatory relationships. Now it seems that Prime Minister Theresa May and other Brexit hardliners like Liam Fox and David Davis are coming round to the same conclusion. If the timetable is extended, then this could be good news for Sterling, which has hovered in a $1.20 to $1.30 range for most of the past year. That's well below the $1.50 it reached on the night of the referendum. While that would be good news for anyone thinking about their summer holidays on the continent, investors in the export-heavy FTSE 100 index may be less impressed. Mm -hmm.